Yo, what's good, YouTube, man? It's Gary with the Fan TV, man. Back action on this video, like the content. This video, go smash that like button, like the content. This channel, go hit subscribe, man. Look, so, all right, Ravens versus Colts game preview, man. We're going to start it off. I haven't done one of these so far this year, uh, but we're going to start right here. Week three, couple games in the book, some stats are out there now. And, um, you know, I can give you the injury report. Well, I think about what was going to happen, X factors and the score prediction. So let's just get right into it, all right? So we want to start with the injury report, okay? So we got to know who's out there playing. Ryan Kelly, the starting center for the Colts, out. Anthony Richardson, out, starting quarterback, number what? Top five pick in the draft, all right? He's out, okay? Uh, Quentin Nelson, questionable. He's likely to play. He was, I think, a full participant in this Friday's practice, so he's likely going to play. So their all-pro guard will be out there. Uh, Kenny Moore, questionable, one of the best uh, slot corners in the league, Kenny Moore is. And he's. I think he's going to be, I got him listed down as game time decision because he went from limited to did not practice to limited again on Friday. So I think that he's going to be a game time decision whether or not he plays, but he's officially listed as questionable. All right. All right. So that's for the Colts side. Now for the Ravens side, uh, we went over this yesterday. But, you know, if you guys didn't catch the video yesterday, I can go over the Ravens um, injury report as well. The guys that are not going to play. All right. So, Odell Beckham out. Justice Hill out. Uh, Marlon Humphrey out. Ty Linderbaum, Odafi Owe, Ronnie Stanley, Marcus Williams all out. All in total, the Ravens are going to be without seven starters. Really eight starters if you count our Darius Washington. Who was put on IR and maybe lost for the season. All right. So, that's what the Ravens are looking at heading into this Colts game right here, all right? All right. Now, the Colts' last two games, right? Who have they played? What were the results? 31-21 week one versus the Jaguars lost. 31-20 versus the Texans. They got a W, okay? So that's that's what they're coming off of. One and one. Ravens are 2-0, and obviously undefeated so far to start the year. Um, this early on is kind of hard to predict records, and obviously for them, those were two division games, or those are two opponents that, that they know very well. Jags are very talented, and the Texans, who the Ravens beat in week one, we know are a very, very young team, all right? So, let's talk about what this coach defense has given up so far in terms of yardage, things like that, right? So, pass defense, right now, Colts are giving up 287 yards a game. They're 29th in the NFL in pass defense, 68% uh, completion percentage right now, which is 24th in the NFL. Um, but they are getting four sacks a game, which is tied for fifth, but that could also have a lot to do with that. Teams are dropping back against them a lot, and they're finding some success. The Colts do have a pretty decent defensive line, led by DeForest Buckner. I've talked about him before. All right, so rushing defense, 78 and a half yards a game for seventh in the NFL. So they're pretty good so far stopping the run to start the year, all right? So if I look at that, right? And I say, all right, they're, they're kind of weaker right now in the in pass defense. And they may be without one of their best players in Kenny Moore. That's where the Ravens should probably look to attack, right? Uh, running the ball is going to be not a challenge, but it's going to be very, very different, all right? The Ravens have officially elevated Melvin Gordon from the practice squad to the active roster for this Sunday's game. Um, now, obviously, that's after Justice Hill's injury. And the Ravens have also signed King and Drake, okay? So... They probably figure as though Kane Drake has just got here, get him some conditioning in. Um, they don't want to throw him out there, which I can understand that decision. Um, this week is going to be a little tough, all right? Just because Melvin Gordon and Gus Elvis do a lot of the same things at this point in Melvin Gordon's career. They're kind of like the same back, right? Both kind of power guys. Um, one cut and go, not really too much shiftiness. I don't know how much the Ravens are going to get out of these guys in the passing game from the running back position, right? Something that we saw Justice Hill do pretty well last week versus the Bengals, right? Or at least was a threat to be that guy on the field. Um, this week, the Ravens won't have that threat too much out of the backfield. So that's going to mean Lamar Jackson, who played really, really well versus the Bengals last week, and then all the wide receivers. Now, we know, like I already mentioned, Odell Beckham is out. But Nelson Aguilar came in and filled in and played really well. So, for me, that's the X factor right there. Can Nelson Aguilar do it again, right? Um, this Ravens offense really clicked and um, got in tune last week. Pretty much from quarters one, three, and four. Second quarter was a little bit of a lull. But one, three, and four, that Ravens offense was clicking. It was moving down the field with the Bengals, right? Can they do that? Can they take advantage of a Colts defense that 
hasn't defended the pass so far, hasn't defended the pass well so far this year. Can they take advantage of that? Because they're going to have to, right? Now, another big X factor is it's going to be the weather, right? Uh, it's projected to rain pretty much the entire day tomorrow, like nonstop rain. Now, there's supposed to be a, uh, a cyclone, Ophelia coming through this area, whatever like that. So we'll see what happens during the game. You know, if it has to be any delays, anything like that, I don't know. But expect rain. How heavy? But I don't know. But expect rain. So that can also make it a challenge of throwing the football. Uh, Lamar Jackson has a big arm. He can cut through most weather. So I'm not worried about that from that. But at the same time, we know Lamar Jackson has had some issues with ball handling, fumbling, things like that. And now you throw in rain into the mix, wet game, things could get tricky. All right. That's all I'm saying about that. So if I had to look at the X Factor, I'm still going to say Nelson Aguilar. Um, just because he's filling, not, I don't even want to say filling in, but he's stepping up into Odell Beckham's spot. Um, excuse me. And you're going to have Bateman, Zay, uh, Aguilar out there. And Aguilar played well. Just want to see him do it back to back weeks. Uh, he's been, um, I was wrong when the Aguilar signing. I can fully admit that. Um, so far, he's been, he's, when he, the chances he's got, he's played well. So I just want to see that continue. All right. All right. Let's talk about this. Um, Ravens defense versus the Colts offense, okay? Now, we already mentioned Anthony Richardson is out, so um, some things are going to be changing a little bit from how the Colts probably typically want to run the offense, right? All right, so 26 points per game, 10th uh, in the NFL, top of 10th in the NFL, actually tied with the Ravens. That's what the Ravens average right now, 26 points per game. Pass offense, 221 a game for 14. Uh, passing attempts, 36 per game for 12th. Uh, they're allowing two sacks a game. For 12th in the NFL, uh, as far as the rushing goes, 95 yards a game for 19th, 24 carries, 24 and a half, so 25 carries, you want to say that, per game for 20th, and only averaging 3.9 yards per carry for 19th in the NFL. Now, a big, big thing that's going on with the Colts is obviously there's this standoff between Jonathan Taylor and the Colts organization, so that could be one of the main reasons why their running game hasn't looked as effective as maybe it has in years past. Um, you know, Jonathan Taylor wants to get paid. Colts are holding out on that. You know, a whole big thing is going over there. Will he get traded? Will he not? But the main point is he won't be playing versus the Ravens, right? You know, I think he's on IR for them. They can't play the first four games anyway. So he won't be playing versus the Ravens. Um, they're going to have a couple of backup guys in. The Ravens need to shut down the run game and force Gardner Minshew to win this game for the Colts, right? That's the Ravens' path to success right there. So if I look at these stats, I see that the Colts are averaging 36 pass attempts per, per game. Now, some of that's Anthony Richardson. Some of that is obviously Gardner Minshew, so it's kind of mixed together. But if the Ravens can get these guys, Gardner Minshew throw the ball 35, 40 times in this game tomorrow, um, that's a recipe for success for the Ravens, right? Now, the Ravens' pass defense obviously took a major blow. Um, yes, I'm saying major blow because I think Ardarius Washington was playing that well in a slot nickel position. Um, they took a blow losing him. Now, you're going to have Arthur Marlette step up, uh, but he hasn't really played a lot. We're talking about either. I'm talking about preseason training camp, all of it. He hasn't really played a lot. He got injured early on, and he's just now coming back. So I guess he's been practicing lately, but a lot of reps haven't really been there for Arthur Marlette. So how would he react in his first game? Um, I look at Brandon Stevens, Ronald Darby, Rocky Seen. Um, these kind of guys are all three kind of outside corners, so they'll probably do some more rotating around and things like that. But Brandon Stevens has played really well to start this year, right? So I want to see that continue. The uh, Colts had big physical receivers, Alec Pierce, Michael Pittman. They have big guys on the outside. They have big tight ends as well. So um, I think the Colts will – I honestly looking at these stats, I was kind of surprised how much they've been passing the ball. But a lot of that could be great game script and losing games, things like that. But if I'm looking at the Ravens' perspective, right, um, the X factor on the Ravens defense that I'm looking out for, I'm going to go with Jadavion Clowney. All right. And why Jadavion Clowney? Just because last week I felt like he had a really, really good game. And now with Odafi always sideline out for this game, the Ravens are going to be calling on Jadavion Clowney even more. Now, he played a lot of snaps last week. I don't know if the Ravens can continue to play him at that high snap low. You know, you don't want to burn him out and then have him get injured. And then you'll really be struggling for um, edge rushers. But Javon Clowney, I thought, played the run well. And then besides that, really got after the Bengals, really got after Joe Burrow last week. Uh, so I'm looking for him to do that again. Now, Gardner Minshew is 
I'm not going to say he's elusive, but he is kind of one of those, you know, smaller, slippery quarterbacks. So the Ravens have to be on top of that, right? They can't allow him to, to get, out of, get out of the pocket, scramble, and then look for guys down the field because he's not really a runner. He'll scramble to throw the football, right? So that's what Gardner Mitchell can do. Um, the Ravens have to contain that. And like I said, in a bad weather game, which this has the potential to be a bad weather game because, like I said, all the projections are – it's going to snow, and that's snow. So it's going to rain. It's going to rain really hard. That's all the projections are saying right now. If the Ravens can force Gardner Minshew to throw the ball in the rain, bad weather, 35, 40 times, recipe for success, and they should come down with the interception, should come down with a couple of sacks, right? Um, so Jadavion Clowney, that's my X factor on the Ravens defense. He needs to get off the line and uh, really cause havoc in that backfield like he did last week versus the Bengals. And I think that he can repeat that kind of performance again. So I have faith that he can do that. All right. So lastly, I want to get into the score prediction. Now, with everything that I've said, uh, every all the numbers and the stats that I've given you, I am feeling a Ravens W in this game. It's hard for me to predict Ravens L's. I'm not, not going to lie to y'all. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm going to keep it as unbiased as I can. But I am predicting a Ravens W. I really do feel like they will win this football game. Uh, I'm going to go 27-13 Ravens. I think the Colts, um, you know, touchdown, two field goals, something like that. And then, you know, the Ravens continue their streak of just – I saw an interesting streak that said the Ravens haven't scored 28 points in like 16 straight games. But um, I'm not saying they won't do that because I think the offense is a struggle. I just think it's a little bit more of a weather thing. I think the Ravens will be able to move the ball up and down the field on the Colts. Um, and the Ravens' offense has been decent. So if the Ravens' offense can take another step – then you could definitely be looking at 30 plus points. But I'm going to leave it at 27 13 Ravens. That's my prediction. Uh, give me your guys' score prediction in the comments. And if you're new here, consider hitting that subscribe button. So I'm going to get out of here. It's Gabriel. It's another fan TV. I'm out.